Yeah, Mark was like, yeah, one of the flags is waving. It indicates motion and movement forward. <laughs> so he had it. You make, me, you make me sound like a bricklayer from, from Chelsea. <laughs> All right, I'll put the wall there, but I can't say it will stay up forever. It might fall down. That's, that's all I'm, I'm saying. That's the best I can do is make you sound like a chimney sweep from Mary Poppins. <laughs> all, right. all right, I'll go up the chimney, but I'm not saying I'll be able to get down again. <laughs> could be worse. He could make you into like some Cornwallian or something. Oh, she'll, she'll, she'll. Yeah. <laughs> my love. I'll do it. <laughs> I always love those guys because I can't understand a damn word they're saying. Yeah, yeah. Greg, is that an adapter gesture you yeah. were just doing? That's good. No. It's a yeah, that's good. Boredom yeah. gesture. <laughs> a long day. All right, so we ready? Yeah, let's go into it. All right. Here we go. <coughs> I'm Scott Rouse. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Scott Rouse, my body. <laughs> ready? Here we go. I'm Scott Rouse, I'm a body language expert and analyst. I trained law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. I also created bodylanguagetactics.com with Greg Hartley. Mark? I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language. I help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, and gain credibility every time they speak, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase. Hi, Chase Hughes. I'm a number one best-selling author in behavioral profiling, influence, and persuasion. I train government agencies in such and the general public, and I'm the author of this fiction book here, which is about to be a TV series. Greg? I'm Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written a bunch of books on body language and behavior and put this course together, this number one course with Scott called BodyLanguageTactics.com. I spend most of my time on Wall Street and in corporate America. Excellent. All right. Well, today we're doing part two of the uh, Harris-Pence debate, vice presidential debate. The last one uh, seemed like there wasn't a whole lot going on, but as we found out, there's a lot more going on than we than was obvious to the, the normal viewer. So we poured, pointed some of those things out. And we're going to be doing that again today as well. Does anybody have something want to add to this before we go forward? Yeah. So guys, here's what we're going to do in this video. Much like we did the presidential debate, we'll play a clip of video that shows both people at the same time. Then we will cover first one, then the other, and then play the video a second time for you to be able to see what we were talking about. In the first case, we'll start with Pence and then move to Harris. And then the next time we'll go from Harris to Pence. How's that? Now, as we go through this, keep in mind, we go right down the middle and we call them like we see them. We're not on the left side. We're not on the right side. If you think we are, then you're wrong because all we're doing is telling you what we see. And you find somebody else that does what we're doing now and they'll do the same thing for you. They'll, they'll be to say, no, they're not being to the left or to the right. They're just telling you what they see. That's exactly what they're looking at. So keep that in mind as we go forward. It's so important because if not, it ruins the whole thing. So, all right, we're good. Yeah. Let's go to the first video. When you speak about the Supreme Court, though, I think the American people really deserve an answer, Senator Harris. Are you and Joe Biden going to pack the court if Judge Amy Coney Barrett is confirmed? I mean, there have been 29 vacancies on the Supreme Court during presidential election years from George Washington to Barack Obama. Presidents have nominated in all 29 cases. But your party is actually openly advocating adding seats to the Supreme Court, which has had nine seats for 150 years, if you don't get your way. This is a classic case of if you can't win by the rules, you're gonna change the rules. Now you've refused to answer the question. Joe Biden has refused to answer the question. So I think the American people would really like to know if Judge Amy Coney Barrett is confirmed to the Supreme Court of the United States, are you and Joe Biden, if somehow you win this election, going to pack the Supreme Court to get your way? All right, Mark, you wanna go first? Yeah, sure. So what interests me most about this is you see him kind of stabilize himself for this moment. And then I would say he gets quite performative around it. These are performed behaviors, including, I would say, the lip bite that he does. It's very much measured. It doesn't really fall in the right places mm -hmm. to be a true kind of lip suppressor. I think he's performing for the audience the feeling and emotion he wants them to feel while they then, uh, you know, hear the reply of 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 Harris, and I think he's pretty good at this. Uh, I think you really hear that radio show uh, wistful voice. He takes you back in time to a, to to uh, to a uh, 
you know, uh, to a wistful place. There's those emotional kind of almost dreamy voice that he has. Uh, it is really quite a performance. And I think it works very well. One thing I will point out is, are you and Biden going to pack the court? And we do see his head spring back and this display of the throat uh, as, as a, maybe not a chin jut, but certainly he's very proud of delivering that remark to her. That's what I got for that one. Uh, Chase, what do you got? We know that Harris knew this question was coming. And when she hears it start, her blink rate goes from an, about a 44 to a 98. So that's a shift in behaviors. So what we're really seeing here is a stress response. So typically blink rate increases with stress and decreases with relaxation or focus on something. And we see that shoot up. It's perfect. It's a perfect illustration of what to look for if you're in sales or if I'm coaching an attorney on what jurors are starting to agree with you, they're going to be blinking less often. So that's a great indicator there that's a, a good educational takeaway. There's a good lip compression and retraction there with Harris that is great. And I typically teach that compression is withholding and retraction is most of the time a need for reassurance. Pence's blink rate stays an average of about 20 through the whole video. The question's rehearsed. He is in full political mode right now. And the hand gestures and the timelines are very important. When Pence is talking about timelines, his past tense, we typically view timelines in left to right fashion. So he's doing his left to his right as a timeline. If I was coaching him, I would absolutely teach him this one critical thing. If you're looking at a person, timelines go that way to that person. So when I'm referencing the past, I'm going to move over here. I'm referencing the future. It's going to be this direction. So the timeline is more relatable to the people that are watching. Scott, what do you got? Excellent. Um, I'll start. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to mark stuff off, off as you guys talk about it. So uh, with, with Pence, we don't see a whole lot. You know, and we talked about that last time, but at the same time, we don't see a whole lot. We see so much because he's so trained to be stoic and he's so practiced at it to look like the alpha. His movements are slow. There's nothing big. He's not moving around doing these smiles and getting really huge, ex, you know, expressions on his face. He's he's in there being the alpha. He's being the guy that has, he's prepared and everything he's, he's throwing out or everything he's firing over that way is timed. It looks good. It sounds like and sounds the, the way it should. The chin jet that you were talking about, Mark, and, and what you're talking about as well, Chase, I think you're right. Because when his head goes back after he says that, the head goes back, it's not, it's not like, there you go. It's more of a here's what I, it's more like I'm being dominant in the situation. I know something and and that I don't think that I've got you on. I'm stinging you with this. So here it comes, like that. So almost like an, an, the, not arrogance, but it's that that look of I got you now. That's the that's the road he's going down with that. That's what it looks like to me. Um, all right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so here's where baseline is everything. We talk about Pence, and we're talking about Pence not moving much, but Pence moves a hell of a lot for Pence. If you've watched Pence throughout everything else he's ever done in his life, even when he's standing, his delivery is metered. I wouldn't say wooden. I don't believe it's wooden. I think he actually delivers. His hands measure exactly what he's saying. He just takes his time. He doesn't move around a lot. He's doing the chained elephant in the chair here. Watch him. He's actually moving. I've never seen him move this much, which means he's animated. He's going after Harris. When Pence goes after Harris, his cadence of speech rises. The elevation at the end of his sentences rise, not in an asking, but in a telling, driving the point home. And then there's actually a place in here you see contempt. You watch his right lip rise at about 18 seconds into the video as he's talking to her after he calls um, – Biden and Harris out on, are you going to pack the court? I love the head back, chin raised, but he also squints his eyes. That's my dad and where were you tonight, son, when I was 16 and took the car. So that's a, hey, I got you on the, gri on the, on the grid and I'm going after you. His blink rate is up. There's some increased emotion in this for him because I think this is his point to make in this debate is you're going to pack the court. And this comes up 
throughout this whole interchange, we're going to see this is his gotcha for the entire thing. Okay. And that's what I got. Yeah. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so here's what I've got with Harris, and I'm going back to what you were alluding to there or stating there, um, uh, Chase, at the start, which is I started looking at her blink rate, and I instantly went, oh, I think that's quite high, but you've got to be careful because, well, you know, what do I know? I don't know the baseline. So I went back to a speech that she did at uh, Democratic Congress 2020, and it's when she accepts the nomination. Now, it's not a big crowd there, but it is a home crowd for her. She's rehearsed. She's, she's reading a speech, but we've got to accept there's still going to be a high level of stress and pressure for her. What I got was half the blink rate in that speech, and, she, and it doubles in this. So I'm going to suggest she's feeling herself under quite a lot of stress and pressure right now. Now, I'm, I didn't then go and baseline the rest of this speech, and maybe, Chase, you've got a better idea of what's going on here throughout the speech. I'd be interested in that. So I don't know whether that's her baseline throughout this, but I will say it seemed quite notable to me just how strong the blink rate was, how the blink rate was. Um, uh, oh, and I think we do see her as well really starting to shift in the seat as well. A lot of, lot of movement and not the excited movement that I'll explain to you what that looks like um, a, little bit, uh, a little bit later on uh, in this. Scott, what you got? All right. Well, for Harris, here's what I got. We see her hands clasped together. And when they come together, she's used this as a combination of an adapter and an illustrator as well. Because as she starts talking, then we'll see her hit these on specific words or phrases. Now, notice when she first starts doing this, her thumbs are down, like, are, are down a little bit like this. Joe Navarro, the, you know, he's the guy, he's, he's the godfather, as Greg says, of, of the body language we study today. He's the one that's always talking about thumbs and how important they are. So they're very important because if your thumbs go away, that means you're, you're, um, you don't feel confident. You're not sure what's going on, or you may not have the answer, those types of things. And when you see them go down, that's when you lose your confidence. Hers are, are, are they're up a little, but they're, they're sort of down compared to what they're going to be in a minute because she starts writing and she turns away from pants and starts acting like she's probably writing something, but she's writing something down, almost ignoring and, and belittling him to make it, make it like, it's like when someone is talking to you and they're talking about something, you start preening. It's, it's that writing is the same thing. I, I believe given the same feelings if she was preening, she's totally ignoring him. And as she does, once she does that and comes back, then we see her, her hands come together the clasp clasped together and we slow, slowly see her thumbs come up rise up a little bit they don't come up like this but they rise up just a little bit because she's got confidence with the answer she's giving uh when and on her when she's speaking about when she's using this as the um illustrator the hit on every word we're going to talk about that when we see it in the next one but that's what i i'm seeing is uh, the important parts here greg what do you got <clears throat> yeah, so this one's loaded for me. Number one, she is demonstrative in body language, much more than Pence is by nature. Her baseline is much higher, much more elevated. So you don't see her change as much, but there's a tremendous amount of body language leaking. In the beginning, when Pence is talking, she's looking at her notes, her lips are pursed in disapproval. You can't miss that little purse that she does. And then she actually starts some mouth movement and you see her moving around inside her mouth. When people are thinking, They'll move their lips, they'll move their tongue around, and her tongue actually leaves her mouth at one point. I think it's around 36 seconds. Her tongue actually leaves her mouth as she's sitting thinking. Everything's going good, and then as he calls her name, as he calls her out and says, Senator Harris, what are you going to do? She turns and she points her nose directly at him. She starts paying attention to him. She locks in. Her barriers increase, that's when her hands close, and her blink rate increases significantly. Then she transitions to that smile. I call it the Robert De Niro smile, like he was going to get you. If you, if you think of De Niro as a, as a bad guy, anytime you're in trouble with him, he had kind of a weird smile. Upper face was condemning, lower face smiling. You see that come out in her. So I say it's a lot like a De Niro smile. Her lower face is engaged, but her upper face looks not the same. It's, it's a, I think it is a practiced thing from her prosecuting days. It's a way to control conversation. And she uses her face 
much as a regulator to control conversation if you watch her. She does it very well. The only other person on the campaign who does that is Trump. And I bet they would hate for me to compare the two of them, but they both use their face as a regulator over and over and over. That's a form of skepticism she's showing him. Then she transitions to amusement and her eyes light up as she realizes he's stepping into her trap about Lincoln. And then you can see her face change. She points her head down. She's amused. One of my favorite the little curls of the mouth, the eyes sparkle, and she starts scribbling her next steps and what she's going to do. If he could read body language, he would know something ugly is about to happen. And I think he misses an opportunity there. Uh, I got more than that because there's a whole lot in her face and her using her face to regulate. Yeah. But I think she she is a fantastic nonverbal communicator and she's got she's used it her entire time. And guys, when you hear that, I don't want you to hear me saying he's a slow moving, slow speaking. That's very alpha. She's not. She's done it the other way. Those are two very different styles that are effective for these two people. Yeah, excellent. When you speak about the Supreme Court, though, I think the American people really deserve an answer, Senator Harris. Are you and Joe Biden going to pack the court if Judge Amy Coney Barrett is confirmed? I mean, there have been 29 vacancies on the Supreme Court during presidential election years from George Washington to Barack Obama. Presidents have nominated in all 29 cases. But your party is actually openly advocating adding seats to the Supreme Court, which has had nine seats for 150 years, if you don't get your way. This is a classic case of if you can't win by the rules, you're going to change the rules. Now, you've refused to answer the question. Joe Biden has refused to answer the question. So I think the American people would really like to know if Judge Amy Coney Barrett is confirmed to the Supreme Court of the United States, are you and Joe Biden, if somehow you win this election, going to pack the Supreme Court to get your way. All right, let's move on to the next one. Yeah. I'm so glad we went through a little history lesson. Let's do that a little more. In 1864. Well, I'd like you to answer the question. No, Mr. Yes, Vice she, President, I'm speaking. Please, I'm speaking. Okay. In 1864, one of the, I think, political heroes, certainly of the president, I, I assume of you also, Mr. Vice President, is Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln was up for re-election. And it was 27 days before the election. And a seat became open on the United States Supreme Court. Abraham Lincoln's party was in charge, not only of the White House, but the Senate. But Honest Abe said, it's not the right thing to do. The American people deserve to make the decision about who will be the next president in the United States. And then that person can select who will serve for a lifetime on the highest court of our land. And so Joe and I are very clear. The American people are voting right now, and it should be their decision about who will serve on this most important body for a lifetime. Thank you. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so we're gonna go with Harris first on, on this one. And uh, look, when, when she mentions 80, 1864, you see her kind of wiggle in the chair and lift up. That's when we know she believes she's got something really great and she's very proud and excited by what she's going to do here, which is a class maneuver. Uh, and it's a class maneuver for the following reasons. What it does by going along the Abraham Lincoln line, you know, a hero of the, of the president, a hero of yours, logically what it suggests is, well, if you're going to buy into that, you have to buy into everything I'm going to say and all the things that person said. That's not true. You never have to do that in logic, by the way. You can say that person is a hero of mine, but I don't agree with this specific thing that they did at this time. But of course, that's, that's tricky in debate when the other person gets to speak all the time. You don't get a chance to, to intersect into uh, what I would call in, in, in logic a, a, a syllogism or, or crooked thinking, essentially. Anyway, so here's what happens is she knows she's got him uh, trapped here. She enjoys it. Now, of course, what it also does as well, to go back in history which, of course, Pence loves to do, but also is a conservative, generally a conservative value. Things that happened in the past, let's conserve those ideas. So by going into the past, uh, it, it secures a conservative idea, and therefore it's a tough one for Pence to fight back on. She's very pleased about this. Uh, I'll, I'll talk later on about how Pence responds 
to this uh, and his, his disappointment, I would su suggest, around this. I would say right at the start, a little history lesson, a little more. Uh, to be honest, it is a little bit condescending verbally around that. But again, nice manoeuvre. Why not? Everything's fair in these debates, quite honestly. And so what she does is opens with a framework of condescension and then starts, um, I guess, penetrating uh, Pence's argument with some faulty logic, but really skillfully, skillfully done. And she knows that skill and she's very pleased with that. I thought it, I thought it was great. Uh, Chase, what do you got on this? I picked up really sharply on that word little history lesson as well. And I think that was deliberately diminutive and uh, dare I say juvenile in, in, in the response there. But we see that postural adjustment. She knows she has the trap ready to go. And when she's reminding him, I'm speaking, this was reminiscent of watching the movie Mean Girls to me. This did not seem like it was rehearsed. It seemed like that was, that was some of her coming out. That was the non-acting part coming out there. And this was, it, it seemed, uh, again, juvenile. But she came back really hard. She said it were 27 days before the election, and she starts nodding to the camera to get the viewers at home to start nodding along as she's talking about the election coming up. If I were coaching her, when she said the word election, I would have her subtly gesture towards herself. Anytime she said the word vote, important, brilliant election, just tiny, subtle gestures towards herself as she's nodding to the camera to help connect those two things. And she does it again when she says we're voting, people are voting right now. And again, some more great coaching reference to the camera when she says it is their decision. Looking at the camera and nodding. This is a well-coached or well-learned behavior that is very influential, especially in this medium coming through a camera. Scott, what do you got? All right. Well, with Harris on this part, again, we see clasped, clasped hands. So we see the thumbs together. When she emphasizes, or when she uses them as an illustrator, she hits history and more. So those are the important words to her. She wants some, there's just a little history le lesson let's talk about a little bit more. Those are the ones that are important to her. Then she almost pops out of her chair and she makes a sound with her foot as she's moving. And she looks like a kid in high school who said, okay, what do you have? And and then she pops up and says, and does this and acts like she, and smiles real big and acts like she's going to deliver. It's so childlike to be doing it. It's, it's, it's like a child in school who's been told to do something and they deliver it that way. Good or bad, I don't know. That's her style. Um, then um, she spreads her hands, and that sort of gets your attention, like Mark's always talking about, trying to get you boxed in, get your attention right in here as she starts delivering that. And then um, overall, it's sort of a um, – she's she's loaded for bear with this one, and I think she's so ready. She can't hardly stand it, and that's why we see all that excitement with her. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so a handful of things. Number one, I love that you pointed out the nodding because it works really well. It also, for you watching, is a great tool in an argument. If I'm arguing with you, I will never tell you what my argument is. I listen to yours and nod until you give me your entire argument, and then I chop it up in pieces when I'm done. That's something you can use and take away from this. She's loaded for bears, exactly what I was thinking as well, Scott. She's got her hands here, and that is not a barrier in this case. That's waiting, waiting, waiting. And I find it really funny that suddenly the trap springs open and she comes after you. It's almost poetic to watch. Then when he interrupts, condescending is exactly what I saw as well. She points her chin and closes her eyes and says, I'm talking, and then flashes her teeth. And that is a normal behavior for her. I've seen her do it again this week. So it's something she's accustomed to doing, saying, don't cut me off. I am going to talk. And, you know, depending on where you grow up, what you deal with, what kind of industry you're in, that may be a vital and important piece. Her whole body moves, to your guys' point, to that postural bump or whatever else you want to call it. When she comes up, she starts the, the head nodding, and then she makes good solid eye contact with him. And then I got you. When she's talking to the camera, you can see that she's probably been coached by the same person that Joe Biden has been coached by. 
because she moves in with both hands and then starts the evangelist thing to the camera. And then as she finishes, she closes her eyes, has a little smile, barriers, and has pursed lips. If you watch just at the end, and that's the prosecution rests. She's done. Perfect. Well, nicely done. As you, I'm used to Mark wrapping it up. <laughs> that was a great one, man. Uh, we, got, right. we got Pence, yeah? Pence next. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so here's my view on how Pence deals with what is actually a very, very good maneuver on Harris's part, because uh, he has to agree with the whole premise of Lincoln, has to agree with that. And so now she's taking him down a, a route of faulty logic. I think he knows that. I think he knows he's now trapped. And what we see is, in my view, uh, lip suppression. We see quite a big swallow. We get a really nice, subtle, but, but because Pence literally on, most of the time does nothing, a very subtle disdain on him is actually quite big and it's held for a long, long time. There's nothing to really mask it. So we get lip suppression, swallow, we get sus uh, disdain. And I think what is lovely at the end of it all is I think we get sadness at the end of it. I think he's actually uh, quite upset about how he got caught in this one. And, and well, he should be because at the start of this whole thing, he was pretty triumphant that he was taking Harris down quite a good route. She switched it quite well on him on, on Lincoln and 1864. And now he's in the corner of the room and he can't get out of it. And he's like, oh, that's really depressing how that went for me. So I, I really love this exchange. Um, it's great how it works out from a, from a logistics uh, point of view. You know, whoever, whoever you side with, whatever your bias is, you got to love the pattern that plays out there because it really is quite, quite lovely. Uh, Chase, what do you got on this one? I, I saw many of the same things here. So I, we see his blink rate go up and we see a flash of contempt on his face the moment she says, voting right now. We see a little flash of contempt. And I, I'm not going to contribute too much to this. We saw a lot, of, a lot of Harris here. But what we really saw here was a guy who moved a pawn or a rook into the wrong place and got put in check. Right. Scott, what do you got? All right. Well, here, after her salvo of saying uh, his the first sentence out of her mouth, we see his nostrils flare. I think there might be, being a nose man, having a big one, I can talk free, speak freely about the nose. Yeah, yeah. It looks like his nostril on the on the right, as we're looking at his left nostril, might be something wrong with it. Because as it, when those nostrils flare, it doesn't go out very far. But the other one does. But I can see a little bit of movement in that one. So that maybe that uh, fight or flight's kicking in. Uh, but at the same time, he's com he, he's his composure is still contained, so that's good. And after she says Abe Lincoln, um, we see his lips purse. And he did twice. He does this thing where it's a closed, where he goes then like that. And then we see not long after that when she says, uh, "But almost, uh, but honest Abe." That's when we see. I believe it's on honest Abe. That's when he does the, his stress mouth. I call it just bring lips. Where he's, but he's containing all that anger. And then when. Uh, yeah, so oh, then um, you see that contempt when he really does smile after she says, um, honest Abe, when he's turned away from her, he actually does a real smile and a real laugh. But at the same time, you see that one side of the mouth go up and it's contempt. You see that not even it's not even a hint. It's we got a full blown contempt thing going on there. So it's I think that's that's a classic sign of that. Greg, what do you got? Yeah. So when he says, I would like you to answer the question, he makes hard eye contact with the moderator. If you notice that he's trying to get th them to answer question, his hands go down and you see concern in his brow. He looks at the moderator and you can see he, he has the look of, come on, teacher. Hey, what's going on? Almost like a kid when he's doing that. His dominant eye starts to shrink. He's frustrated with the situation. His blink rate is up. But he nods agreement when she says, I'm talking. He does a regulator and he, you know, he's civil and does a regulator and moves on. And then he has a kind of a distaste in his mouth, that thing you were talking about where he kind of pushes his lips forward just a little, followed by lip compression. And Chase, I know you say withheld information. I, I will say often the same thing, but I think it's controlled emotion, which is information. Same thing. Depends on whether it's words or something else you're holding. He makes eye contact 
with the camera. And when he gets that smirk of contempt, it's clear. It is not hidden at all. When he looks right at the camera, when she's talking about the, Ameri the American people are voting, watch that. that. The right side of his face is asymmetric to the left. Left is straight, the right side smirked, and he's clear at it. And then finally, he closes, eye blocks, and tilts his head, almost like, are you done? And I agree with you. I think she got, he put his pawn or some other piece in the way and he got it run over is what happened here. Now he has to recover and we go from there. But I think it is what it is. I, I see a lot of, I wish I hadn't done that. Excellent. I'm so glad we went through a little history lesson. Let's do that a little more. In 1864. Well, I'd like you to answer the question. No, Mr. Yes, Vice she, President, I'm please, speaking. Please, I'm speaking. Okay. In 1864, one of the, I think, political heroes, certainly of the president, I, I assume if you also, Mr. Vice President, is Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln was up for re-election. And it was 27 days before the election. And a seat became open on the United States Supreme Court. Abraham Lincoln's party was in charge, not only of the White House, but the Senate. But Honest Abe said, it's not the right thing to do. The American people deserve to make the decision about who will be the next president in the United States. And then that person can select who will serve for a lifetime on the highest court of our land. And so Joe and I are very clear. The American people are voting right now and it should be their decision about who will serve on this most important body for a lifetime. Thank you. We're right, we're good. Yeah. Right. Let's move on. And, and Senator the Harris. People, Susan, are voting right now. They'd like to know if you and Joe Biden are going to pack the Supreme Court if you don't get your way in this nomination. Let's talk about packing. You once Come again on. gave a non-answer. Joe Biden gave a non-answer. <laughs> trying to answer you the now. The American people deserve a straight <laughs> answer. And, and if you haven't figured it out yet, the straight answer is they are going to pack the Supreme Court if they somehow win this election. But, Men Mr. and women, Vice I, I, I got to tell you, people across this country, if you cherish our Supreme Court, if you cherish the separation of powers, you need to reject the Biden-Harris ticket. Come November the 3rd, re-elect President Donald Trump, and we'll stand by that separation of powers in a nine-seat Supreme Court. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so uh, here's what I want to focus on is uh, Pence, when he talks about packing, kind of in the center of that, what he does, because he, he now, he, he flops around a little bit before that. He can't quite find his way. But once he decides, okay, I'm going to go for packing, and, and he decides to play that piece, he looks straight down the camera. Uh, he raises his eyebrows to, to get that, the public's attention. He starts nodding his head on that, and he starts really controlling the message at this point. It takes him a while, but when he gets there, he absolutely consumes the camera and takes all the audience's attention. I'll tell you later on what I see in, uh, in Harris when this happens. But ultimately, I would say he was looking for a recovery. It takes him some time to get there. He absolutely gets there. And his opponent uh, is not happy of, of, of that recovery. But I'll, I'll leave it at that. Just, just great work on, on eyebrow raise, heading down the camera, stabilizing, and getting that point across on packing and finding that stability on that. Uh, Chase, what do you got for me? So he announces his question or begins his question with something called a postural tilt. And this is if she is on his, his right, he leans away from her while asking the question. I think this is indicative of why, when we're going to ask for something big from our mom and dad when we're little, we kind of lean away. And I think this is a, a little retreat a little subconscious retreat as the question comes out. And as he's saying, you need to reject the Biden-Harris ticket. He shows more concealed contempt that you can see in the replay or you can double tap the screen and go back and look at it. And Harris has a great response to that we'll talk about in a minute. Greg, what do you got? 
Yeah, there's an uncharacteristic thing for him in using a regulator or mark as you would call it a modulator or a moderator. And I, as I watch him, I'm seeing I'm just trying to get a straight answer here. He, I'm asking this question and then he, he realizes she's not going to do it. And he's like, don't waste your time forces his hand forward. Uncharacteristic of him, typically. Um, then his right brow goes up, and he starts to pay more, to lock in on her with his with both eyes. And his voice is telling at this point. It's not asking. There's no more of that. And then he gets to this point where he starts talking about if they somehow manage to win. And you see his brows up, if they somehow manage to win. I think what he's saying here is they don't have a chance of winning, believe me, but he may not be certain himself. At the same time, I think he's trying to tell her, answer the question. If he had any control, he would. And to your point, Chase, he rises as he leans away at the same time. I think it, that's all I've got. So, Scott, what do you got? Yeah. All right. I, I'd say usually I'm not, I, I hate doing being at the end when there's all these specifics in here because everything gets eaten up. Um, so, again, we're seeing all these these alpha behaviors with, with, with him where he's just stoic. You know, which I think are classic. We're not we're not seeing a lot, but we're seeing so much by not seeing a lot because uh, his gestures are clean. They're right to the point. And again, when he's looking right down the barrel of the camera, she starts to talk and he sort of waves her off. So he uses that hand as a, uh, a regulator to get rid of her, to, to, to help her, you know, to, to shut her down as he's trying to say something. Uh, and you're right. He's he's that's all I got. I mean, he's looking, that's what I got for. But I had to even go down Greg's thing because that's I get the same things. Dang it. You could so, talk about Greek mythology and just kind of throw it in That's right. World. That's You're right. Only left with the Romans and the Greeks by this time. Yeah. 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 Well, there's one that was called um, – I don't, I don't have anything. I can't follow up with that. I got nothing. <laughs> okay, Ray. Here we go. All right, Chase, what do you got? The, the greatest thing here at the very beginning, Harris stops breathing when the question starts coming out. She's taking in a big breath, and the moment she realizes the question that Pence is asking, her breath completely stops. I thought that was very interesting. She's really taking a moment to pause there, backing up, a little bit of backpedaling mentally going on, and right away she starts fidgeting brushes her hair away. I'm sure Greg, Greg's talked about that before. I'm sure Greg will bring that up and brings both of her hands up, protecting the supersternal notch, which is this little divot right here in our rib cage. I was trying to imagine you guys watching this video while Scott was talking about nostril flaring. I was trying really hard not to do it on camera. I was trying to imagine you guys watching this at home, all the people nostril flaring around the world. And right when he finishes up and it's going to be her turn to speak, we see a large tension increase in this muscle right here. And this is the sternocleidomastoid. It jumps in front of the carotid artery when we have the facial expression of fear that pulls our neck down. If you watch a scare compilation, you'll see it. So we see a small micromuscular movement of fear as it starts to get her turn to speak as, as Pence is wrapping up. Scott, what do you got? Okay, great. Thanks. I can actually get something in this time. Um, all right. Well, I think she stops that. She stops breathing because she takes a gut punch with this when that's coming out of his mouth. She's like, Ugh. so that kind of, that puts a, a stop to what she's, to what she's talking about. Then when she starts that, the super sternal line, she starts guarding that. We see that she guards the entire throat at, with his, at the same time. So she's on, she's trying to be a, uh, trying to come on as a, a little snarky with him, like go on. But at the same time, we know that she's guarding that her entire throat doing that. Her arms come in tight. Her arms come in tight around her chest and push close to her chest and around her sides. That shows fight or flight as well. And then you have, um, when he says, uh, Penn says, you need to reject the Biden-Harris ticket. She does this thing. I don't think I've seen this very often. I've seen it a couple of times. She purses her lips. And then they go to one side, then the other side, then we see just a hint of stress mouth. I think she's trying, uh, going back to Chase's point of trying to hold in information, I think that's actually what we're seeing there. She's trying not to say anything. She's trying not to talk at that point. Um, and she sort of freezes because she's in a, in a daze as he's, not really, but in in a debate situation, as he's finishing that, that volley or attack on her, his salvo. And then, but when she says, Mr. Vice President, 
you see her eyes start to flutter there at the end when she starts saying that, Mr. Vice President. Now that could either be eye blocking, you know, like she's she's trying to get her stuff back together, or it could be she's fluttering her eyes at him, sort of in a flirtatious thing. But I don't think that's the 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 mode she's in at that point. And Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is a really good one. When we talk about flirtation, people often associate that with sexuality. But I say people can flirt to close space. And by flirtation, I mean, if you're on a plane and there's a two-year-old four seats away, they can close space between you and them. She's masterful at that kind of flirtation, not sexual flirtation, but the ability to close space. And that is a power. That is a superpower with people, having the ability to close space and make you feel like you're there. What is interesting is she does something that I've coined the phrase in the past I called, I'm just a girl. You see it a lot of times in women who are in non-traditionally women um, populated companies like industrials and those kinds of companies as women make their way in. A lot of times they'll push their hair back over their ear. I, and because I'm a man and I've been in the room with women doing it, I don't know how often they do it when it's just women in the room. But I will tell you that women in the room full of like male dominated businesses will often do that. And it's not a sign of weakness because it's often followed by a pursing of lips a little smile, and then an attack or a comeback at you. And you see it here. She does exactly that. She has her hands tightly gripping in the beginning where her fingers are closely drawn together. It's no longer this relaxed thing. They're very tight. She does that big deflective smile. She has that in common with Joe. They do that big deflective smile to get away. And then she starts oversized movements. To me, oversized movements typically are posturing to make you larger and more threatening and so it tells you that something's going on in her head. Then she moves from disarming to actually going in for the attack. And she makes real on, eye contact with him and does that De Niro smile again, that kind of awkward smile where the lower face is doing one thing and the upper is doing another. Her hands close. You've both covered. She's covering her throat. And as the godfather, Navarro, says, anytime you touch your neck, it's a threat and it's defense. He's, she's covering super sternal notch or those other pieces. Then her lips purse full bore. You see that switching back and forth. And I agree with you both. I think she's trying to contain some information here. When he says the, the, um, the other piece to notice is her chin drops behind her hands and starts to lower to protect her throat, even in the second stage of that protection. And then finally, when he says cherish the Supreme Court, she, her eyes drop down into her right and her respiration is up. She's not happy. That's what I see. Cool. Mark, you want to bring us home on this one? Yeah, lovely. So one of the things I train politicians in is not only how to take the stress, so stress testing them, it's how not to celebrate too much either, because the moment you get a win and you start celebrating, you leave yourself open for destabilization. This is what happens to Harris here. She's so up, her center of gravity is so up, and, and, and Pence starts delivering his attack and controlling it down the camera, she, I think, realizes this. Absolutely, she goes for that protection of the super sternal notch. She misses, <laughs> she actually misses it and has to restabilize herself. So we know she's completely unbalanced at this point. I think she tries to protect the idea of this is a barrier by trying to do a bit of face framing, by trying to go, you know, look at, look at this, you know, look how good this is. Try, trying to show some good genetic characteristics. There is, again, this element of flirt gesture there in order to win back the situation, okay? This is not about any sexual attraction. This is just about going, look, this looks very powerful. And that's what, what I think she's trying to do, protect herself and go, look at how powerful this is to win back the, the audience. I think she realizes he's now got the ball and he's running with it hard and there's no way she's getting this back right now. And so we see, uh, I think, lip suppression. We see the tongue going around the, the mouth. And I think that's she wants to do a tongue out gesture to show her distaste for this. But she suppresses that and holds that back. I think we then see anger. In her. I think she is really angry about how this turned out. What a what a beautiful succession of plays happening there from from Pence being really sad about how it's worked out for him to getting it back again to her being angry about it right now. It's just so what have we covered just a few minutes there 
and and this thing is all over the place the interplay that's going on here is 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 majestic at this point i think what's great is in the presidential debate you don't see anything this intricate this lively uh, there's just too much else too much shouting too much argument going on to see the beauty of what's happening between the two here really is uh, fantastic to watch as far as i'm concerned and that's what I got on that one. Chase, you got something else you want to say? Yeah, and Greg, to your point about women being together and doing the the I'm just a girl gesture, knowing that you coined that phrase probably 15, 20 years ago. One great place you can see this is watching an episode of The Bachelor. If you do you love this, that show, all of these women piled into this mansion living room who don't get along with each other, you'll see it and I think every single episode that I've ever seen, you'll see that you'll see that behavior. Well, you know, I, I, you almost could call it not violence, but you could almost call it pre-conflict maneuver. Whoop. And then that face, it almost always follows in succession. And, you know, I've worked in lots of corporations where they're predominantly men or they're a lot of women. And when that when that thing happens at the table, I'm always sitting going, OK, let's see who she's focused on. Yeah, because something's coming. I just saw Mark do it, and that's what I call the "I'm just a boy" gesture. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like you said, I did this. I, I am just a boy. <laughs> you know, look. Uh, here's what I'd say to all of that: is is that uh, you know we've mentioned juvenile behaviors quite a lot, really, from from both of the parties here. Now, where did they learn first learn their debating? They learned it as kids, and so we should absolutely expect when they're hot into debating that we're going to get some childlike behaviors from them. When you're around a boardroom table, where did we first learn to gain power, to argue with people? We learned it around the family table. So we need to expect around a boardroom table, you're going to get some juvenile behaviors around there. So, so when we mention juvenile, we're not saying, hey, this person is childish. Right. We're saying, look, we're seeing some instinct, some very early behaviors from this person that they're not able to suppress at this point. And so for people like us, it's kind of exciting to see that because we're going, they're under stress and pressure now. They're leaking some of the earliest behaviors that they, they learned. Juvenile behaviors like, you know, a little history, a little more. That's somebody who knows they've got somebody on the ropes and they're going to kick them a little bit more before they even go in for the, the attack. And again, in politics, that's a classic. You have to train politicians. When the opponent is down, leave them down. You don't have to go in and kick them some more. They're already you know, down, down enough. But, but these uh, early behaviors easily come out in these situations. Uh, Greg, yeah. I think you've got something there. Yeah, yeah. Mark, I was just going to add, I work in business and where I get most information is not sitting across the table talking to someone. It's get up, go to the kitchen, get a cup of coffee. It's human nature. All the stuff that we are all preying on, all the stuff we use is all human nature. And it's all all of this, these are things that you learn at a very young age, not just the body language, but the behavior pieces, the reason we're behavior people more than body language people. I say body language is what brought me to the dance. I really want to know why. That's really my big driver. And I think all four of us would say that. Yeah. yeah. So Chase, you had an idea or what were you talking about? Yeah. So if I'm, uh, we know what Mark does. Everybody watching knows what Mark does. But if, if all of us were coaching the candidates, what, what is a few pieces of advice you would give them? This is the cheapest services that any of us will ever provide. But, but how would you coach them moving forward in the debates? Uh, well, I'll go first and say, don't let them chew gum. <laughs> <laughs> After that, I'd say uh, it's sort of you want to kind of a, a cross between the both of them, you know, because they're they're. With Pence, he's very stoic. He's very he's got that alpha thing going on. But when you look over at, at Harris, man, she's coming on strong with those. She's framing herself very well. She's she looks really good. She's pretty. She's got all that going on. So her everything he says is really clear. Everything she says is really clear. Their diction is right on the money. So that I have no complaints with that. Except when it comes to what Mark was talking about, juvenile behaviors, stay away from those because you automatically, when you start seeing that that snarky you know, approach to things and you go, oh, no matter what side you're on, you go, oh, man, I don't want to, I wish that hadn't happened because you have to back that if you're on that side. You have to say, yeah, I'm all about that. And so that suggests, it denotes and indicates that you might be that kind of person as well. 
you know? So as far as that goes, I think she did a great job. I think he did a great job as well. So that's, that's what I got. We'll leave Mark for last. Greg, what do you got? Yeah. So I think if I were coaching Pence, I would say be a little more demonstrative, move your hands a little more when he's on and really on and passionate, his hands did come up, but he has a little bit of an ice prince. He's a little bit of a stoic kind of a standing off at a distance. He's trying to drive home the one key deliverable here, but he has to be careful that he doesn't come across as not passionate. That's the piece I would say is more illustrators, more eye contact, more moving your head, but that isn't his style. It's something he's gotten this far with. Both of these people, and they're you know they're not significantly different in age, have created careers and made their way to here. So we're coaching them to do something that is counter to who they are that made them successful, which is, Mark, I would imagine, always the toughest part. And then for Harris, she's very demonstrative, has big sweeping body language, and she's the consummate prosecutor. She controls conversation with her with her face and those kinds of things. I think they appeal to their base based on those two pieces as well. So we have to be careful. And then finally, when you get down to where you're trying to force someone to answer a very complex question, this is kind of like having a girlfriend and a wife and you're asked and you're trying to talk to both of them at the same time. There's no good answer. You have to dance the dance. And I think Seeing both of them under stress is the reason we picked these videos. You can see that Pence thinks he has the upper hand and suddenly Harris takes it from him and then he turns back to her and puts her back on. And I think they were poised. I would say, try to remember if you're going for the other side, you need to be more like the other side. So if you're going for a very stoic group, you need to calm down. If you're going for a very passionate group, you need to plus up. And remember, they're vice presidential candidates. That's what I have. Mark has three planes he covers on those. <laughs> that very subject. Yeah. Chase, what do you got? So uh, I would give the advice to, to Harris, and I would say it's okay to be serious and measured. It's okay to be still. If there's one thing fear does, it speeds up our behaviors. And I would give her the advice, if you're on the debate stage or ever in front of the public eye, never move faster than you would if you were in a swimming pool. That should be your maximum speed it to create be. trust because those people's brains who are watching you are, are unconsciously reading your behavior. We've been doing it for millions of years before language existed. And for, for Pence and actually for both of them, it's okay to be animated and you have to win over the crowd. People saying our interest or our uh, attention is shifting and getting smaller, our attention spans getting smaller. I don't believe that. What I think is our interest level is getting smaller. That's why we, we can only pay attention to a couple of things at work, but we can still watch nine seasons of Game of Thrones over the course of two days. So uh, the attention spans there. It's the interest that's lacking. So Harris, Pence, you're both competing with the brain that's used to Instagram and Facebook. The, the first tenth of a second that a video is not interesting, those people are used to flipping right up. And it's quick to lose them. So for, especially for Pence, there's some phrases called focus phrases, which make us humans start paying attention. That's that's when people say things like that, what I just said, when I'm leading you up to something. And the secret to that is, there's another one. The scary part of that is, there's another one. And here's what's what it all comes down to. Those phrases like that generate more focus. He has to do more to generate more focus. And for both candidates, I would say it's very helpful to do very tiny gestures. If I'm saying distrustful, I might very subtly point towards that side of the stage where I'm saying, and some people may decide not to vote for somebody. And I'm going to gesture towards that side of the stage. Or if I say the word election, or if I say the word vice president, I'm going to be very subtle gesture towards myself, not pointing, but just kind of a subtle gesture. Just a couple of things I, I would give them right off the bat. Mark? Yeah, lovely. So first of all, look, uh, if you agree with the ideology of the one side, then you're most likely very happy with what they did. If you're with the ideology of the other side, you're most likely very happy with what they did. All we're ever concerned with in these situations is who might change their mind about this or who might be activated into voting for the first time or might be, you know, activated staying at home and not doing anything this time. 
So what I don't know at the moment is like what what they need to get other than their base. What you saw from them is a performance that will absolutely keep their base. It's not going to change anybody's minds around who are, who, who had got their minds set. So what would I do? You know, given that I I don't know who they're really trying to speak to. Well, I think it's a combination of what we've we've heard there. Very much you need to play to the to the opposite. Uh, for Pence, I imagine there's something there that could surprise us and delight us that we weren't expecting. So we get that stoic nature from him. And then at some point during one of these debates, he does something where we go, you know what, I didn't expect that from him. And it, and it speaks to the, to the opposite side for just long enough that we go, you know what, I, I kind of would consider him strangely but it's got to be a bit of a surprise and and that's not surprise is not his speciality you know you get you get what you always get with him um with with harris uh, i would really want to work with her on just getting her to control her celebration a little bit more her delight at, at winning just so she's yeah. not stay destabilized so much because I think those moments where she's destabilized, we see a succession of, of facial gestures which tell us about her disappointment and her anger around that, and of course, the opponent's success. And I think we look at that potentially if we're in a swing and we go, ah, Am I really in for the person who got disappointed by their loss? Or, or went from the high to the low, because you get a tragedy there. You get somebody who was celebrating one moment and they're deep in anger the next. And, and we're not trying to vote for a tragedy at all. So that's where I'd go with this. But, you know, certainly what we saw there was, was, was quite a match and quite a dance going on with two people who really do know what they're doing from two very different backgrounds who take those skills and bring them is, into this arena and do a really incredible uh, job of it. You know, so, so great to watch. Uh, thanks for joining in and watching with us on that. Yeah, excellent. Dang, Mark, that was great. I figured you'd do the, the uh, three planes. No. And, and Senator the, Harris. People, Susan, are voting right now. They'd like to know if you and Joe Biden are going to pack the Supreme Court if you don't get your way in this nomination. Let's talk about packing. You once Come again on. gave a non-answer. Joe Biden gave a non-answer. <laughs> trying to answer you the now. American people deserve a straight <laughs> answer. And, and if you haven't figured it out yet, the straight answer is they are going to pack the Supreme Court if they somehow win this election. The, Men Mr. and women, Vice I, I, I got to tell you, it's... people across this country, if you cherish our Supreme Court, if you cherish the separation of powers, you need to reject the Biden-Harris ticket Come November the 3rd, re-elect President Donald Trump, and we'll stand by that separation of powers in a nine-seat Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, that's anyway. Job. It was cool to me. As <laughs> first watch this thing, it's kind of boring from a distance. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. If you don't know what you're looking for, it's a, man, it's a dang a snooze yeah. fest. But well, in our case, it was like, wow. You've got the big heavyweights, you know, thumping each other around on the last one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, yeah. you can't look at this and go, there's nothing going on. Whereas actually, the, there's more interesting stuff going on, I think. Well, Kevin mm -hmm. wouldn't have stuck around, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No and chance. you know what? And guys, when we're getting ready for a video, for you, we all upload everything into a little Dropbox file. And sometimes Scott gets it ready. Sometimes Mark gets all the videos ready. I have I can count maybe on one hand – but it's been several times we've uploaded videos and then I go in there and I put it on the iPad on the kitchen counter and I'm kind of glancing at it a few times. And I'm like, what are they thinking? This is just boring. There's nothing here. And then I watch it a second time and I'm like, oh, I know exactly why we, why we grab this piece here. Yeah. That's it's Greg. It's That's fun. all Greg. So I'm always looking for that. I'm looking for one that, you know, anybody can look and see guys screaming at each other yeah. and understand it. But when it's subtle and there's nuanced between the two people, I, I love those. Yeah. That's what we deal with mostly. We don't see somebody coming and go, oh, because that's obvious. But yeah, Greg's great at finding those things. So just yeah. so you know, that's who we, we've assigned. That's what Greg does. Is he goes out and finds the videos we watch. We talk about a subject and go, all right, sounds good to me. Greg, you see some what do you got? <laughs> do what? You see some of the ones I don't choose. Oh, okay. like, uh, people yeah. Yeah, you do have a lot of them. Yeah. So, all right. Well, uh, thanks for watching this time. And listen, you, you probably want to subscribe if you do. 
go ahead and touch and hit the subscribe button. Hit that little bell because that lets you know we have a, another video coming out. And uh, if we're all good, I guess we'll see everybody next time. Yeah. Good. Great. All right. Bye. See you next um, time. Bye now. All right, all right. Well, what do you want to do? Here comes Chase. What can we be doing? <laughs> I'm cleaning my glasses. I don't know what else. Yeah, let's do that. Let's pretend we're talking. So, Mark, you act like you're telling a joke or something, and we'll just. Oh, what? Well, without the sound? Here we go. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs>